In the weeks since I filmed my last video on internships and coronavirus, even more has progressed, as we all knew it would. As companies continue to evaluate what their next steps are going to be as a result of COVID-19, some are pushing decisions out and postponing and deferring their internships, some are shifting them to online remote internships, and others have made the tough call to cancel their upcoming internship program altogether. In the coming weeks and months, we will learn even more. But in the meantime, what can you be doing as a student if your internship has been canceled? That's what I'm going to cover in this video because you do have options. You can be productive with this time and you can still take control of your future without an internship. And if this is the future and you've stumbled upon this video after the coronavirus outbreak has slowed down and life has gone back to normal, I still encourage you to stick around and watch this video because I'm sharing five internship alternatives that will be helpful to you as you work on your professional development as a student, virus outbreak or not. First and foremost, before I go over the five different ways that you can come out of this situation with new skills, professional relationships, and an enhanced resume, let's talk about how you should handle the news that your internship has been canceled. There is a wrong way to handle this and there is a right way. The wrong way is holding on to frustration or anger toward a company and failing to communicate with them, and representing yourself in a negative way by leaving comments on Twitter about how you feel about this entire situation. A lot of students are doing this, and in some cases, they're mentioning the company's names in their tweets. I've seen it. Don't do this. Don't burn bridges. You worked hard to get this internship, and you have no idea what could still come out of all that hard work. And remember, we are all in this together. The company did not want to cancel the internship program any more than you did. Instead of burning bridges and being negative online and all of those things, the right way to handle your internship getting canceled is let yourself feel frustrated and angry and sad for a moment by yourself. Then vent a little bit to your family and close friends, but don't go on Twitter. Don't take this to the internet. You're human and you're allowed to feel this way about something that you were looking forward to and the fact that it got canceled and what a shock all that is to you. But after you let yourself feel those emotions, pull yourself together and send the company an email or get on the phone with them and maintain the relationship. Hear me again, maintain the relationship. Do this before too much time has passed. This is a professional relationship that you worked hard to build and get up to this point with. Don't lose it. You want to be the intern that reacts in a mature way and leaves a positive mark. You want to be the intern that they call first when everything goes back to normal. So reach out to them and stay in touch with them. Maintain a positive relationship. Now that you're prepared to snap out of it and handle yourself like a professional, Give this video a like if you're eager to learn more about what I have to share with you today. The options and the internship alternatives that you have to still gain experience and skills even if your internship has been canceled. Here we go. Option number one for students who have had their upcoming internship canceled. Short-term paid professional projects. Say that again five times fast. These are projects from real companies. Tasks that are important to the company, but perhaps not the best use of their time, or maybe under current circumstances, the people that used to perform these tasks have been reallocated to other urgent needs, and they need someone new to come in and step in to complete these tasks. These projects are short-term, usually 20 to 40 hours of work in total, and they're offered across many different departments and areas of a business. And they're actual professional assignments like data analysis, market research, technology best practices, copywriting, financial modeling, budget reconciliation, content creation, and more. And they are paid. So how can you secure these short-term paid projects? Well, you can go about this in a couple ways. First, you can approach the company that you were meant to intern for and see if they have any project-based assignments that you can perform for them. You've already done your research on the company because this is something that you would have done during the interview process and you've gotten to know them a little bit as time has gone on. So come up with some ideas of how you can be of assistance to them and pitch those as projects while also asking them if they have any projects in mind. When you reach out, make sure that you lead with value and that you demonstrate how you can be an asset to them during this time. Put yourself in their shoes for a second and try to think about what challenges they are currently experiencing. Then work from a place that helps them solve those challenges. While other interns in your position and maybe sulking and continuing to use this canceled internship as an excuse for why they aren't advancing professionally. You are seizing this opportunity to present yourself in a positive light to the company 
and you're being an asset to them while still developing your own skills in the process. So what if your company isn't open to short-term projects and they have nothing to offer you? Well, the second way that you can find these short-term paid projects are online. You can do a Google search on your own or you can go through a company that helps connect students to employers for exactly this type of work. One of these companies I recently discovered from a post on LinkedIn, Parker Dewey, and I will link to them in the description below. They connect students with employers for short-term paid assignments. Parker Dewey calls these opportunities micro-internships, and they work with a variety of industries as well as partnering with universities to help place students with opportunities that are a good professional fit. This allows you as the student to explore a variety of roles in company cultures. No matter how you secure a short-term project, the beauty of them is that they give the company an additional flexible resource, especially during this time, and they give you an opportunity to develop new skills and learn more about various tasks and departments firsthand. These projects allow you to evaluate your likes and your dislikes and your fit for future opportunities that you may or may not want to apply for. Keep in mind that you need to treat these opportunities like interviews. If you have any hopes to get another short-term project or a longer-term offer from this company, either a future internship or a full-time position, then you need to treat these projects as interviews. You need to perform the tasks well and demonstrate your time management skills by completing them in the time allotted. You also need to be a good communicator. This means timely with your emails, open to feedback, and proactive about any roadblocks that you see arising throughout the project. I can guarantee that you will be evaluated on all of these things. Option number two for students that have had their upcoming internship canceled, remote internships. Yes, maybe your internship was canceled and your employer is not offering a remote internship at this time but that doesn't exclude you from looking for other remote internship opportunities. Just like in-person internships, these remote opportunities can be paid or unpaid. So assess them just like you would a normal internship search in respect to your own financial needs and situation. And check out my video on unpaid internships if you're looking for some guidance on how to approach that. But even before coronavirus struck, there have been an increasing number of remote internship opportunities surfacing. And you are part of this generation that's best equipped to take them on. You're savvy when it comes to technology and the tools required to do the job. So to find these remote internships, you can perform a simple Google search and just see what's available. But I also encourage you to check in with your campus career center as they may be aware of employers that are looking for students specifically from your school. And if your school uses Handshake or another similar job and internship platform, be sure that you're logging in frequently and following companies that you're interested in so that you're notified as soon as opportunities are posted. Over 500,000 employers are on Handshake and posting internships and jobs, targeting students, and I can bet that quite a bit more of them are posting internships right now that are remote. And don't forget about LinkedIn. There are so many opportunities on LinkedIn as well. And if you even just search hashtag internships, hashtag remote internships on LinkedIn, you'll see the most recent conversations and opportunities coming up in your LinkedIn feed. If you do secure a remote internship and take your work online, there are a few things that you should implement to ensure that your remote experience is a productive and successful one. First, same as the short-term project-based work, communication is key. Be a good communicator. Speak up when things don't make sense or when you need help. Track and share your progress with your manager on a consistent basis and stay on top of your emails. And when it comes to email, don't over-communicate either. Get in a good practice of compiling questions for your manager and sending them a single email versus sending 10 on-the-fly emails over the course of a day. They will love you for being considerate of their time. Second, set goals for yourself at the onset of your internship. I recommend having this conversation with your manager and incorporating their objectives, but you should also have some personal goals set for yourself. For more on this and to get some ideas for goals that you can set, check out this video that I have on internship goals. With any internship, I think that it's important for a step to set goals, but with a remote internship, it's even more important to have goals in place that keep you on track and allow you to check in on your progress and recalibrate if necessary throughout the experience. And the third thing that I want you to implement with remote internships is scheduling touch bases or short virtual coffee breaks with other people in the office. These don't need to be any more than 15 minutes long, but they are a good way for you to connect with more than just your manager or fellow interns. One of the most important things to develop in an internship is a network. And you do that by building relationships with people. 
This isn't so easy to do in a remote work environment. So make it a goal of yours to reach out and connect with a few new people each week and introduce yourself and start building relationships. You can treat these like you would an informational interview. Come prepared to your 15 minute meetings that are virtual with your cup of coffee and any questions that you have for them about their role, their career path, and more. And be prepared to listen to their stories and take notes. Build relationships. Option number three for students who have had their upcoming internship canceled, case-based learning. This is not a paid opportunity, but this is an opportunity for you to learn important business concepts as you work through real world business challenges. Instead of just sitting around doing nothing, you're developing your brain to come up with solutions. I am all about that growth mindset. There are a couple ways that you can go about finding these case-based learning opportunities. And one I've personally done, another I just recently learned about. Let's start with the one that I have experience with from my past. So during my second job out of college, I expressed to my CEO that I wanted to learn financial modeling. That was a skill that I wanted to develop. She was a former investment banker and a Harvard Business School grad, and I knew that she could help teach me this skill. That said, she was also a busy CEO, so it's not like she could sit down and walk me through all of this. Instead, she gave me case studies to complete, and then we would review these case studies together. Now, being a graduate of Harvard Business School, she would give me HBS case studies, actual case studies that students at the business school would do in class. And I'm not sure if you know this about Harvard, I didn't at the time, but they teach their courses using the case method as opposed to a lecture where a professor stands at the front of the classroom and instructs on a topic, a case method class uses a real world business case presented by the instructor and calls for the students to process, problem solve, and work through the case in a collaborative setting. If you're interested in tackling some of the real world challenges that business leaders have faced and developing your own business acumen, you can sample and purchase Harvard Business School case studies to work through from the comfort of your own home. Just visit the Harvard Business Review store website. I will include the link in the description below so that you can visit their site after this video and look for yourself, but you can select cases by category. So entrepreneurship, finance and accounting, operations, technology, marketing, and more. And then you can browse and read through the descriptions of these cases until you find one that interests you. The downloadable PDFs can be purchased for anywhere between usually five and $10. And many of the cases will be on companies that you recognize as well. For example, I did one on the online textbook company Chegg that I'm sure you're all familiar with. The case studies can be pretty challenging, but they are interesting and they can give you a glimpse into a real company and the decisions that they have had to make in the past in order to grow, pivot, and manage. The other way that you can learn through company experience is through a San Francisco-based company I recently discovered called Inside Sherpa. They offer free virtual work experience programs that you can complete, and they describe these as simulation of the work done at leading companies. Again, these programs are free to students, and they're about five to six hours of self-paced content. When you sign up, you can get tasks and instructions from a professional at a real business, that simulate the work that you would actually do at their company. You then work through the task and you're presented with a correct work model at the end of the program in order to compare your work to. It seems to be a pretty cool way to learn and experience tasks firsthand from a real world professional environment. And I will link to the Inside Sherpa website below if that's something that you're interested in checking out. Option number four for students who have had upcoming internships canceled, start a blog or a research project. This option is also a self-guided, unpaid experience, but it offers a lot of value in other ways. I think it's fairly obvious that you can learn a lot about a subject by doing a research project on it, but you can also learn a ton by writing about a subject. That's why I've also included start a blog as an option here, or just freelance write on a specific subject. That actually could become a paid opportunity for you if you're good at it. But the more that you niche down on a subject that interests you and write about it or conduct research on it, the more you're going to understand it and the more educated you will be when discussing this topic with others. Think about how this could help you out in future internship or job interviews, or even when you're networking with other professionals. It makes you more of a thought leader. If you're interested in starting a blog, there are a number of free courses that you can sign up for or even YouTube videos that you can watch that will walk you through the steps. But it's a great way to utilize your time. Not only are you going deep on a subject, but you are gonna be learning how to set up a website in the process as well. It's not a bad set of skills to have. And if you do start blogging or writing on a subject, 
you could see if that subject is relevant to something that your university wants to publish and start blogging for your university. Or you could apply that to perhaps the company that you had intended to intern for before everything got canceled. Look for ways that you can apply what you're doing to other opportunities that are just gonna help enhance your resume. Option number five for students who have had their upcoming internship canceled, invest in yourself by preparing for your future. This final option is a bit more broad and I touched on it briefly in my last video as well but it's important enough to dive into again here. Look at this time that has been gifted back to you as an opportunity to really refine your materials and build up your self-awareness and feel confident in pitching yourself and your personal brand going forward. The previous options I shared with you are all about investing in yourself as well. But what I'm talking about here is really packaging your personal brand in a marketable way. That starts with your resume and your LinkedIn profile. Use this time to get both of them in good shape. Then work on your personal pitch and practice your storytelling, which is an important skill for networking and interviewing. And then start researching future opportunities and create an internship tracker for yourself. And I've done some of the work for you already. I have a free internship tracker that you can download and I will link it in the description below this video. Once you track the internship opportunities that you are interested in, then start applying to those opportunities. Now is the time while other people are sitting on the sidelines and waiting to see what happens next. Then practice some mock interviews with family and friends, maybe ones that you're quarantined with, so that you're prepared and confident when you land interviews in the future. Use this time in our history with an economic downturn lurking as an example for why you should be proactively investing in yourself and always prepared to take control of your future. Will it be harder to get an internship or a job right now? In most cases, yes. But will it be harder to get an internship or job if you don't apply or put in any effort? Absolutely yes. Get in front of the line. Do your research and create your internship tracker now so that you have your materials submitted and you're surfacing to the top of the hiring pipeline when life and work go back to normal. Don't forget to grab your copy of the internship tracker that I created for you at the link in the description below this video. And as I mentioned in the last video, if you don't end up getting an internship right now, whether it be an in-person opportunity or a remote one, and you want to use this time to really set yourself up to land one in the near future, then my online program for students called The Course will be available to you soon. You can sign up for updates and release date at the internhustle.com slash course. And in the course, I help you take control of your future with over 20 video lessons and a step-by-step -step action plan to help you navigate internships and launch. It comes with worksheets that really guide you through the whole process. Again, sign up for updates at the internhustle.com slash course, and I will be sure to link it in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below what internship alternative from this video Video you are most excited to check out. And if this video gave you some new insights today, please give it a like and share it with a friend or two. I'm sure you also have many friends that are looking for internship alternatives at this time. So be a pal and share it with them. And as a reminder, I put out new videos on this channel every Monday to help you take control of your future one internship at a time. So hit that red subscribe button below and don't miss out on those future videos. In support of your hustle, I'm Jenna from theinternhustle.com and I'll see you again on Monday.